In this video, we're going to complete example three. We're going to simplify the following expressions using the index laws. Starting with question A, we're going to multiply the two and the six. Two times six will give us 12. Next, we can see that we're multiplying x to the power of five by x to the power of three. It's important to note that our bases are the same. They're both x, which means that we're allowed to add the powers. When you multiply, you add the powers. So we'll write our base as x, and then we'll go, what is five plus three? That gives us eight. So we get 12 times x to the power of eight. Let's now move on to question B. This is a division question. And it's very important for a division question that you write it as a fraction. So 25a to the power of 8, b to the power of 4, over negative 5a to the power of 5, b to the power of 4. So I'm going to start by dividing my numbers here. I'm going to go 25 divided by negative 5. Now 25 divided by 5 is... 5, and because of the negative, I'm going to put a negative at the front of it. Now let's focus at our a's here. We have the same bases, they both have a base of a, and because it's division, we're going to subtract the powers. We're going to go 8 minus 5, which is 3. So we're going to write a to the power of 3. Next we've got b to the power of 4, and it's got the same power for both of them. And 4 minus 4 is actually 0. When you get the exact same powers like this, you can actually just cancel them out. You can cancel out b to the power of 4, which means that we've got our final simplified expression here, negative 5a cubed. Moving now on to question c, you'll notice we've got brackets and we've got a power of 2 on the outside. This power of 2 has to be applied to everything inside the brackets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 4 to the power of 2. And then for the C, if I've got a power inside the brackets and a power outside the brackets, I need to multiply them. 3 times 2 gives us 6. So that's our simplified expression there. You can, if you get a question like this, you can change the 4 squared to 16 and write it as 16c to the power of 6. I would be happy with either one of these simplified expressions that you can see here. Just a little side note, notice that the 4 didn't have a power. And some of you might remember that if you don't have a power, technically it's got a power of 1 because there's only one four. So when you think about it, we did three times two to get the six. We actually did the same thing for this two here. We, we did one times two to get two. Let's now move on to question D. When you get a negative number inside the brackets, uh, it can confuse some people. So I'm actually gonna leave that last. Let's focus on the A and the B. I can see I've got a power of 5 on the outside of the brackets, which needs to be applied to everything inside the brackets. So I know that my A is now going to have a power of 5, and my B will have a power of 15, because 3 times 5 is 15. So what do we do with the negative 2? Well, it's actually really important that I put my negative 2 in brackets and say that I'm putting the number negative 2. 2 to the power of 5. Some people make the mistake of putting just 2 to the power of 5, and they forget to do it to the negative as well. Remember how I said before, everything inside the brackets needs to be applied to the power of 5, not just the 2, the negative as well. Now I think it would be good to simplify this a little bit more. I can put negative 2 to the power of 5. It will actually give me negative 32, and we'll keep a to the power of 5 and b to the power of 15. I prefer this simplified expression below than the one above, 
The reason being, it just doesn't look very nice when you've got a negative number inside of brackets like this. It just gets rid of those brackets. Okay, let's now move on to question E. We'll start with our first set of brackets. Everything inside the brackets needs to be applied to this power of 3. So I'm going to put 4 to the power of 3. C is going to go to the power of 15 because 5 times 3 is 15. And also D is going to be put to the power of 3. Let's now look at the second set of brackets. Everything here needs to be put to the power of 4. So we're going to start with 2, 2 to the power of 4, and then C, we already have a power of 3, so we're going to go 3 times 4, which is 12. So we get C to the power of 12, then D, we already have a power of 2, so 2 times 4 is 8. So we get D to the power of 8. Now to simplify this even further, I'd like to work out what 4 to the power of 3 is. I'm going to write that as 64. C to the power of 15, D to the power of 3, and 2 to the power of 4 is 16, and I'll keep the rest the same. Okay, I can go another step. I can multiply these numbers. 64 times 16 is 1024. And when we multiply anything with the same base, we can see our C's here have the same base. You just add the powers. So 15 plus 12 is 27. So we go C to the power of 27 and D to the power of 11 because 3 plus 8 is 11. Let's now move on to question F. You will notice in our first set of brackets, we have a negative and no number. And I'm going to change that because it becomes confusing when you try and work something like that out. I'm going to change it so it's negative 1 xy squared. Notice that the only thing I've changed is I've put a 1 in here. And you might remember that when there's a 1 in front of a pronumeral, we don't usually write it. So I'm actually going to put it in this time. I'm going to leave the rest of my expression the same, and we're going to move on from here. Okay, so everything inside the brackets needs to be applied to the power of 2. So I'm going to start with my negative 1. I'm going to put negative 1 to the power of 2, and I'm going to keep that in brackets. I'm going to put x to the power of 2 as well as y to the power of 2. Looking at my next set of brackets, everything in this set of brackets needs to be applied to the power of 3. So I'm going to put 3 to the power of 3 and x to the power of 15 because I need to multiply the powers. 5 times 3 is 15. And then finally we'll put y to the power of 3. Okay, so what's negative 1 squared? Well, negative 1 squared is just negative 1 times negative 1, which gives me positive 1. And then I have x squared, y squared, uh, 3 to the power of 3 is 27, and then x to the power of 15, and y to the power of 3. And I should be writing my equals sign down each time to show that these expressions are all equivalent. Okay, 1 times 27 is 27, so I multiplied my numbers. And now I'm going to add my powers. So I've got x, and I've got y, and I've got to figure out my powers. 2 plus 15 is 17, so I've got 17 x's. 2 plus 3 is 5, so I have 5 y's here. All right, our last two questions. Let's move on to question G. We have a fraction inside of the brackets and a power on the outside. So everything inside this set of brackets needs to be applied to this power of 3. So we're going to have 4 to the power of 3, b to the power of 3, and for our denominator we're going to have 3 to the power of 3 and a to the power of 3. 
This is our simplified expression. Now there's nothing here I can really cancel, but I can take 4 to the power of 3 and 3 to the power of 3 and convert them to a single number. So 4 to the power of 3 is 64, so I'm going to write 64 at the top, as well as b to the power of 3. And 3 to the power of 3 is 27, and we'll write a to the power of 3 next to that. We'll now look at question H. There's quite a lot going on here. And the first thing I want to do is work with this negative here. It's inside the brackets, and I want to treat that as negative 1. So I'm just going to write the number 1 in here. It's a, it's a little hard to fit it in. This is now negative 1. I'll just write it in red. OK, so starting with the top of my fraction, Everything inside this set of brackets is to be applied to the power of 3. So I have negative 1 here. I'm going to apply that to the power of 3. I'm going to put it in brackets. I'm going to put x to the power of 3 and y to the power of 3. Everything else is going to remain unchanged at the top of the fraction. Let's now focus on the denominator here. You notice this time the negative is outside the bracket, so we're not applying this negative to the power of 2. Only those things inside the brackets will be applied to the power of 2. So we'll take our 3 and put that to the power of 2. Our x already has a power. It has a power of 2, so we're going to go 2 times 2, which is 4. Our y has a power of 5, so we're going to go 5 times 2 and get 10. So we've got y to the power of 10. You'll notice I haven't really looked at the negative yet. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep this out the front, like so. Okay, our next line of working. What's negative 1 to the power of 3? Well, this means negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. We're multiplying it three times. And if you multiply it three times, you actually get a single solution of negative one. So we're going to change that to just negative one. x cubed, y cubed, times 12, x to the power of four, y to the power of six. So what are we going to do for the denominator here? This negative with a 3 squared can throw some people, and I, I just want to illustrate this just to the left. There's two situations that you can be faced with. You can be faced with negative 3 squared or negative 3 in brackets squared. If we do the one on the right, this means negative 3 times negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3, which actually comes out to positive 9. Whereas this one on the left, you'll notice that only the 3 has been squared. In this situation, we just go 3 times 3, and we just put the negative out the front. You'll actually get negative 9 in this situation. So for the denominator here, we actually want to have negative 9 at the beginning, x to the power of 4, y to the power of 10. Next I'd like to simplify the top of my fraction here. I'm going to multiply my numbers, negative 1 times 12, which gives me negative 12. And then I'm going to add up my indices. So you can see we've got x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 4. We're going to go 3 plus 4, giving us x to the power of 7. And then we'll get y to the power of 9, because 3 plus 6 is 9. All right, looking at our denominator, we have negative 9 below. We'll just copy it all down. x to the power of 4 and y to the power of 10. All right, we're going to go one more step to simplify this. One last step. 
And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to simplify our numbers here. We've got negative 12 over negative 9, and we can't just divide them. 12 divide 9 makes a decimal. One thing I can do is I can cancel out the negatives because I've got one negative above and one negative below. And 12 over 9 can be simplified to 4 over 3. 4 over 3. And in case you don't know how I did that, I just divided both of these numbers by 3. 12 divided 3 is 4, and 9 divided 3 is 3. Next, looking at our powers. This is a fraction, which means we're dividing. And when we divide, we subtract powers. So we're going 7 minus 4, which is 3. So we're going to have x to the power of 3, and it's going to go at the top of the fraction. You'll notice that we've got y to the power of 9 at top and y to the power of 10 at the bottom. So we've actually got more y's at the bottom of the fraction than we do at the top. We're still going to subtract. We're still going to go 10 minus 9, which is 1. Except because we had more y's at the bottom of the fraction, we're going to write y to the power of 1 at the bottom. All right, and because I don't like to put things to the power of 1, I'm just going to get rid of that 1. So I'm going to rewrite it as 4x to the power of 3 over 3y. Anyway, that concludes example 3. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.